Hello and good morning, and welcome to Beacon Academy's online remembrance event. My name is Sam, and I am proud to open this event for our community, and I now pass over to history teacher, Mr. Braidwood. Thank you to Sam, and good morning. As we commemorate another Remembrance Day, it is with honour and pride that I am able to stand here and speak on behalf of Beacon Academy. As a history teacher, Remembrance Day resonates strongly with me, and I'm able to teach about it every year, but more so it resonates with me because we are able to remember the sacrifices of the men and women who have died, unfortunately, in war and have given us our freedoms that we have today. After World War I, when the guns fell silent, on Flanders Field, all that would grow were poppies. These became the national symbol of remembrance and on the 11th day, on the 11th month, at 11 o'clock, we give two minutes of our time to those who no longer are able to enjoy that time themselves. They were told that World War I, the Great War, would be the war to end all wars. Unfortunately, this did not come to pass. From another Great War in the 1940s to the Cold War and the genocides in Rwanda, Bosnia and Cambodia, war didn't end and millions more have lost their lives. Remembrance Day now takes on a larger meaning and we now commemorate not only the dead of World War I, but the dead of all wars in the last two centuries. We also need to reflect on what it was that those men were fighting for in the trenches. They fought for freedom, the right to choose, and they fought to uphold the ideals of humanity. They fought for people to be able to be who they want to be. It is our duty in 2021 to reflect those values. It is our duty to ensure that no matter who you are, you are accepted by this world. Your skin colour, gender, sexuality or religion should not be a method of judgement. Be these choices or something you are born into, that is what makes you great. Those men in the trenches, they didn't care who st stood or sat beside them, so why should we? As a species, there is more that brings us together than divides us. We can create amazing things and solve almost impossible issues. Why would we want to limit these possibilities through discrimination and prejudice? The recent COP26 is a, a fantastic example of where we can show that we can work together as a global community to try and limit the damage caused by climate change. Petty, petty rivalries and past grievances mean little when we are trying to save the world. At Beacon we are proud to be inclusive and continue to fight for the freedom and peace that those who died in war gave their lives for. They are now gone but their fight still very much continues and they want us to continue fighting for a better world. We have to continue to strive to be better. We must remember, we must never forget, and we must continue the freedom to be able to choose. I will now hand you over to our head teacher, Miss Robinson. Thank you very much to Mr Braidwood from our history department for his poignant and reflective presentation about remembrance. Thanks also in advance to our wonderful and inspiring students, Sam, Will, Willow and Natasha, who will also be part of this presentation and I will be handing over to them after I've spoken to you. My name is Anna Robinson and I'm the very proud head teacher of Beacon Academy. I would like to welcome everyone to this remembrance event and especially those who are joining us remotely, whether you are watching from one of our local primary schools, from home or as part of one of our community groups or organisations. And in particular, I'd like to mention the following. Crowborough and District Veterans and Supporters Association, Air Cadets 1414 Crowborough Squadron, First Crowborough Scout Group, All Saints Church, Crowborough Town Council, Sewing, Crowbees, Crowborough Life, Crowborough Magazine, Crowborough Town Crier, The Times of Tunbridge Wells, Kent and Sussex Courier and the Sussex Express. Some of you may know that we held our first virtual remembrance last year in 2020 when we were obviously limited by restrictions due to the pandemic. This year while we're really delighted to be able to take part in the remembrance service for our town on the green for Armistice Day we're really pleased and want to be able to continue this new tradition um, for our school and hold a whole school event uh, remotely as well. We feel it's positive for our school, we feel it's positive for all of our students and staff and our local community as well. This year, 2021, is particularly special because it marks 100 years of the nation's collective remembrance traditions and how they were first brought together. 
Remembrance is observed on this day in most countries to recall the hostilities of war. It's a chance to keep in mind the courage and sacrifice of those who serve their countries, to pay tribute to the special contribution of families and of the emergency services, to acknowledge innocent civilians who have lost their lives in conflict and acts of terrorism. It's also time to recognise that as future generations we have a responsibility to work relentlessly for the peace that they fought so hard to achieve. They died for their families, for their friends, for their homes and they died for us. Our future is their monument. Within our approaching two minute silence, it's important to remember that two minutes to remember the fallen is never too much to ask. During our tutor time today, we shared a short video clip that was produced by the British Legion. The message from this clip is really clear and a reminder of why giving our time, especially in the 21st century, is just as important as it's ever been. The message is one that I'm going to recap now uh, because it is clear and current and it resonates with all of us. Pause. Let's break the silence on the two minute silence and pause. You see, it's not about which side of the argument you side with. This is an act of kindness. You may not know their names. You may never meet them face to face. But imagine what it must feel like to never again see the face of your brother, your sister, your parents, or your best friend. Imagine all that you had left was the pictures they left on their social media or in a backpack full of their belongings. This is more than some war in your history textbook. You don't have to agree with the politicians. You don't have to like their decisions, but you can decide to empathize. And yes, it can be awkward just standing there, but try this. Try closing your eyes. In that time, remember those who risk their lives knowing every second it might be their last. So if we give them a second or two, even two minutes, is that really too much to ask? So let that football stop. Let your conversations reach a full stop. Silence your phone. Close your laptop. Pause your coffee. Switch off the TV. Because when it comes to empathy, we can all stand on the front line. And on the 11th of the 11th at 11 a.m., we can all choose to unite. We need to talk about the silence and then pause, lest we forget the moment is ours. I'm now going to hand over to our wonderful and inspiring students, Sam, Willow and Will, for a reading of the poem In Flanders Field by John McRae. This will be followed by a performance of The Last Post from one of our another amazing students, uh, Natasha, who is in Year 9. We will then hold our two minutes silence, during which time an exhibition of remembrance-inspired artworks by students at Beacon Academy and Sir Henry Fermer Primary School will be displayed, before our event is closed by our Head of Personal Development, Miss Lorna Miller. In Flanders fields the poppies blow between the crosses row on row. At Marker Place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw the sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours and hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow, in Flanders fields. <laughs>
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. These words truly reflect the great sacrifice made by so many to give us the liberty that we have today. They also remind us of the countless soldiers who suffered separation from their families and loved ones as they went off to fight for their country. Whilst we cannot compare our situation to those in the Great Wars, over the past two years we have gained much empathy for how families would have felt being kept apart. We are lucky that we have had the opportunity to stay in touch through the use of technology but that will not have stemmed the immense loneliness and grief felt by so many since the start of the pandemic. Whilst restrictions have eased, 2021 has remained a difficult year for us all, and this does not exclude our war veterans who, after a year of not being able to do so, have been back out in some communities to sell poppies and raise money to support the British Legion and their families. In the absence of a poppy appeal organiser for Crowborough this year, sewing crow bees have created a wall of knitted poppies for visitors to take in exchange for a donation to their GoFundMe fundraiser in aid of the poppy appeal. Alternatively, you can now donate directly to the poppy appeal via parent pay until Friday the 19th of November. Remembering those we have sadly lost during the pandemic remains in our thoughts as we give thanks to the armed forces and NHS for protecting our national life. All in all, it feels even more pertinent today in 2021 and on Remembrance Day to take the opportunity to pay tribute to all those who risked their lives and continue to do so in service of our country. Thank you to Miss Robinson, Mr Braidwood and our Beacon students for speaking today. And thank you to each of you for taking the time to join us in remembrance.